If you want to use it, it's up to you. I have to use Okay. So, we all heard Zach's presentation last week about fast food and how it's bad for you. We've heard that a lot of times. We've seen Food Inc., at least I, I know a lot of people that have seen it. And we all know that there's you know, negative health benefits to eating fast food. And yet, the average person still continues to eat fast food. Now, why is this? We know better. We've been warned. And it's because it's really hard to break a habit, a habit that's been inc incorporated into our culture. Because I believe that eating fast food has become integrated into the American lifestyle. And unfortunately, it will remain so, regardless of all the health warnings that we get. Now, to prove this, I will discuss two specific groups of people that fast food attracts. Also, I'll explain how it is that fast food becomes incorporated into their lifestyles. And lastly, I will address why I believe that increasing awareness of the negative health effects of fast food is really not enough to stop the consumption of it. The first group of people I want to discuss is the poor and the lower working class, meaning the people that earn less than is required to live. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, there's the poverty rate right now is 50%, and it's been so since 2010. 2010. It hasn't increased, it hasn't decreased, it's been the same. But it's still really high, it's been high. It's the highest it's been since I believe the 1950s, 1940s. Um, this means that 46 million people are poor. 46 million is a lot of people. We live in the Orange County. We don't really see it because it's Orange County, but when we go out there to the rest of our country, there's a lot of cities that really are in really devastating situations, and there's like a lot of poverty, not many jobs, people are in tough situations. Now, when I say poor, I refer to the population that falls, falls under the poverty line. And if you guys don't know what, I'm, what that means, it's um, pretty much is the income that that family is required to have in order to you know, have enough to live. So for example, family of four, the least you're required to make annually is $23,000, which doesn't sound like much, but. Now, why is it that fast food attracts these people? Well, think about it. You're a person that has a low wage job. You work 40, 50 hours a week. You only get paid $8 an hour, minimum wage. You, you don't have much money. It's not enough money to feed your family. Therefore, you think, okay, I don't have mon enough money for the rent. I'll save up, I'll just buy something cheap. I'll get a taco that costs, what, 59 cents, 60 cents, 70 cents, beef five layer burrito, what, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> or you don't have time. You're working 40 hours a week, 50 hours a week. If you have one, one full time, if you have two, think of all those um, single mothers out there that have a family of three kids, four kids underneath them. They get two jobs. What happens is they go to the first job, they get out, they go over to Wendy's, they get a sandwich, they eat it while they're driving to their second job, then they go there, they get out. By the time they get home, they don't have enough time to sleep. They don't have time to be with their children. They don't have time to cook for their children. Their children, therefore, are fed fast food also. It's easy. It becomes convenient to them. That's what they get used to. They trade off. They do this trade off between affordability and convenience meaning that they pick the cheapest choice at the moment because it solves an immediate problem. Like, they are aware that, hey, this is bad for me, but honestly, their mentality is, okay, yes, I might get like, a heart attack from this in the future, but I will face that when it comes right now. It's either I pay for the rent, or me and my three children are kicked out. <coughs> now, how is, it, how is it that fast food is incorporated into the lifestyle? I already mentioned um, how they have. They need more and more hours in order to keep paying. Um, according to this one article about the poverty rate of 2012, where right now we are facing facing in the rising cost of living, and also inflation, and also um, lack of jobs. Lack of jobs, as we mentioned. Now, because of this, it means that people that are working that have low minimum wage jobs need more and more time, they need more money, they're even more harder pressed to get more money to be able to afford everything. You work more hours, you spend less time at home, you don't go to grocery shopping, which could save you money in the end, you don't have time for it, you don't teach your kids how to cook, your kids become accustomed to eating fast food, which turns into a cycle because when they grow up, they don't know how to cook, what are they going to do? They're going to just get easy meals and they're going to teach their kids to do the same and it continues on and on. I'll use myself as an example. Um, 
I was born in Mexico. In our culture, your mom is supposed to teach you how to make all of the authentic Mexican foods. I, let's see, I know how to make enchiladas, chilaquiles, pancakes. A good omelet, that's about it. <laughs> Compare me to my cousin that lives over there in Ensenada. She knows how to make everything. And I'm just like, well, you know, I have education to worry about. <laughs> that is my only excuse. Um, <clears throat> which brings me to my next point. Why does it matter to us here? It matters because we're college students. And that's the second category of people that I'm going to talk about. We're college students. College takes up time and money. Like I said, I don't have time to cook. My mother always complains, why don't you help around the kitchen? Why don't you cook? And I tell her, okay, I have physics, I have chemistry, I have calculus, I have biology, I have speech. Now, I'm compared to physics and biology and chemistry, I don't have time for it. I have more pressing my future to worry about. We don't have time because we rush from class to work, home, to class, to work. Most of us work here, right? I'm pretty sure. Raise your hand. Yeah, most of us have a part-time <laughs> Most of us have a part-time job, at least. In my case, I work 20, 26 hours a week at a coffee shop. And total class time where I spent sitting in a seat listening to a professor is 20 hours. So it adds up to a full-time job, not including the time I need to study and or the small social life that I have on the side. <laughs> We're all, we all, we're all like that, and I will admit that I do eat fast food. I, okay, I have not eaten McDonald's for a year, because McDonald's, okay, no, I'm not eating that. <laughs> but I am addicted to Jack in the Box curly fries. <laughs> what was it? Um, Monday, Wednesday, I have physics, and it seems like every Monday and Wednesday, I eat at Jack in the Box with my friend Addie. And when was it? A couple days ago, we were just eating there, and I was telling him about my ideas for speech. And I was like, I have this idea to talk about fast food. And then he just kind of stopped, and he's like, you know what? We're going to die from the <laughs> <laughs> We have to stop this. And we would. It's just that there's limited time that we have between studying and going to class. We just become so used to it. It's not just about time. It's also about money. How much was it for a unit last year? Do you guys remember? It was like 30, 30, 36. 36. 36. Now it's 46. How much of a percentage increase is that? I didn't do that. I should have done it. According to Anna Maria Andrades and the article College Tuition, five states where costs are rising, the average tuition has gone up in California by 16 or 21 percent. I'm pretty sure 36 to 46 is more than 21 percent. We feel it. We see how much we're being impacted by like all these budget cuts and how everything is rising in prices. Therefore, there's more to spend on, less to spend on food. And that's why we are more pressed to spend on fast food. Another way the fast food plant place attracts us is by job opportunities. Michael was discussing how right now in this economy, there's not that many jobs out there. Or maybe there is in the Silicon Valley. But when it comes to college students <laughs> that don't have any experience, and we will accept minimum wage because you know, we're desperate, we're the perfect bait for them. They attract us, and even if we do quit, there's always another college student or high school student that is willing to hit, take up our spot. And chances are, if you work in a fast food place, you're probably going to eat their food a lot. I did that when I worked at Little Caesars. I became addicted to their crazy bread, which is not good, because I know how you make them, and I know how much butter and cheese you put on that. It is not good. <laughs> but I still like it. Um, that's another way that fast food attracts us, because of the job opportunities. Because it's hard to get a job out there that's not food related. Because when you think about it, most of the jobs right now in the USA are service oriented, mostly producing food. And the easiest <coughs> to get are the fast food franchises, McDonald's. Now, so far, what I've been trying to say is that, I'm trying to prove, is that eating fast food has become really incorporated into our lifestyles and to buy sales of people that don't have much money. <coughs> and you could say, oh, hey, you know what? We could decrease the number of people eating fast food. Let's just go out there and tell them, hey, negative health benefits. Let's take Zach, and let's have him go to all the schools and just sing to you until he's blue in the face about how it's bad for you. <laughs> oh, hey, we could do that. But when you think about it, it works, but only to an extent. Like, maybe convince all of us here to not eat fast food. Well, not me. 
because I already mentioned I eat fast food. Though. <laughs> Maybe you could convince us, but it's going to be like a New Year's resolution. You're going to be, okay, I'm never again, no more McDonald's, <laughs> nothing. But then three weeks later, you're kind of just like, man, you know, I it would make life so much easier. Just this one time, this one time, and then it becomes the next time, and then next time. <coughs> We're lazy and irresponsible as human beings. That applies to us. Now, when you think about people that can't really afford to change what they eat, people that are struggling financially, more than us, it's even harder to convince them, hey, yeah, no, I know you have two jobs, but go to the grocery store at midnight, get a bunch of food, spend $50 in one week, it's really hard to convince them. Because for them, yeah, it is eat or die, but it's also save up for the rent or get kicked out in the cold streets. So that's why I believe that. Increasing awareness, we, yes, we continue doing it. Well, power to you, but in the end, there's always going to be people that eat fast food. That's the inconvenient <coughs> truth. That fast food franchise will always have a vast pool of people to benefit from, to get profit from, money from. Because there will always be poor economically struggling with people. There will always be overworked, job-seeking college students. And we will all, they will always succumb to eating fast food because, you know, it makes their life easier. The poverty rate, I mentioned, was 15%. It's not going to magically, magically get better, especially at this economy. Same for educational funding. There's been a budget cuts. Where California is in, how many? Oh, <coughs> it's not going to get better anytime soon. Therefore, there's always going to be people that are financially struggling. And to them, there's always going to be the idea, hey, immediate problem, immediate solution, just save by buying this kind of food. That's cheap. So what I'm trying to say, pretty much, is that with our current economy and with our culture that is centered around convenience and rushing and working, the fast food industry really has